Elliot Wolf is pushing hard for J.J. McCarthy to the New England Patriots. So we've uh, touched on this the last couple of days. Let's flush it out a little bit more right here, Maz, because I want to ask you, do you believe Tony Pauline? Yes. On some level, yes. I mean, again, I don't know if everything's always 100% accurate at this time of year. There's always some little caveat somewhere. But do I think that the Patriots like J.J. McCarthy? And my answer is yes, I do. Because I think it's consistent with everything they've said about leadership qualities and toughness. Uh, not only a quarterback, but every position, frankly. It's been the buzz phrase down there all off season. You know, play for one another, toughness, grit. Like the whole thing, leadership, and especially a quarterback. But I think they've even said it about other positions. I think they want the whole team to be tough and gritty and, you know, play Boring. together and all of that. So my answer is yes. I, I think, I said to you the other day, J.J. McCarthy to me in a lot of ways, other than Caleb Williams, is probably the safest quarterback in the, in the group hmm. because I think you know what you're getting. I mean, I say that, I, I think, you know, he is a game manager who's got good leadership qualities. I think he's got more talent than Mac Jones did. And, Murray, I understand the concern and fear that he's the next Mac Jones. And I believe me, every time I look at that face, you know, it just was the <laughs> just case. Look over your shoulder. Right, you as, was, as was the case with Mac Jones. This guy's face is even more punchable than Mac, Mac Jones's was, for crying out loud. But my answer is yes. I'm giving you a long-winded yeah, answer. No, I want it. But yes, yes, absolutely. Do I think that they have an interest in J.J. McCarthy and it's real? Yes. Do you believe it, Murray? I do, because it's the safe pick. And I think Elliot Wolf and the brass want to go with the safe pick because that'll help them keep their jobs. The boomer bus guy, if it's a bust, well, they'll be out in a year. He ain't going to get any kind of extension and be named officially the general manager of the Patriots. But I think that's worth rolling the dice on and someone like Drake May, because if it's a boom, guess what? You hit it, and, you, and you're going to be here a while. But the safer pick for Elliot Wilf and the organization is J.J. McCarthy. So because of that, yes, I believe it. Oh, is J.J. McCarthy the safer choice? I mean, I, I think he feels that way. Again, whether he is or he isn't. He's Other the game manager type that's thrown for like a buck fifty in every game that he's played. Okay, so you're talking about how he's actually going to play out on the field. Yeah. Maybe so, right? He's got a higher floor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about the pushback you get in the here and now. If they just take McCarthy at three, don't you think they're going to get a lot of pushback? Oh, yes. yes. Like, that's going to be a controversial pick. Yes. yes. I'll be there right up front with the pitchforks and the torches. Because okay. so, they're not being gutsy enough. Well, so well, what I would say is that it's just against the consensus, right? It's against the it's against what most people think. Yeah. Correct. They think that McCarthy doesn't belong up there. So it's risky, and they'll get pushback immediately. And if it fails it's more likely to be held against Elliot Wolf. I mean, you know, it all will. It's a good way of looking at it. But if you just go to chalk, right, if the consensus is Williams, Daniels, May, and you just do what everyone expects you to do, what the odds makers say, what the consensus and bulk of scouts, you know, would have you do, there's a chance you can go to the owner in a couple of years when it doesn't work out and say, look, everyone was, I just did what everyone would have done. For uh, PR and politics, that would be the safer way to go. Or job preservation. Yeah. Right? Yep. McCarthy is jumping the line, and you're putting your neck out there a little bit, and you look worse if it's, you failed on that pick. It's draft heresy is what it is. So that's what – that's. I think it would be riskier. But I'm starting with the reports that they're in on J.J. McCarthy. Do you believe it? I don't know why you wouldn't. And it bothers me, the debunkers. The debunkers bother me. Like, Who are these debunkers you speak well, of? Well, for example. well, Give me a debunker. Guy Strawman. <laughs> oh, that, that guy sucks. Know who that guy is? Yeah. No. Oh, he's what? right over there in the yeah. corner. Yeah. He's yeah. over there. He's got hay coming out <laughs> yeah. of his neck. I call him Guy Strawman. Oh, Ray Bulger. <laughs> That's the second joke I've written in two weeks. I just pretty good. To log You're it. actually Thank you. two yeah. for two. Thank you. I, Thank you. Is, you might want I agree. To that was good. Drop, you. drop the mic and leave. Thank you. I thought it sucked. Actually, I wrote that one. Well, you didn't get it because you're not uh, sophisticated no, no, enough it. to get it. I got it. No, it's not. The higher level joke. It's not Guy Strawman. They're, they're, they're all over the place. The established football media doesn't want to buy it because they've been told something else or they just... There's this group think. There's this group think that goes on out there that it's been Williams and Daniels and May, and that's it, and that McCarthy is some sort of late bloomer or some late riser or he's climbing. Maybe teams had this guy ahead of the others, and you just don't know it. Just because 
my effing, and get ready for it, folks. Less than two weeks, the Felger Mass Big Board, just because my Lindy Sports Draft Annual, which is published a month ago, has it Williams, May, Daniel. That doesn't mean that's what teams have. So I just hate the debunking. Yeah, but wouldn't we have heard this before? I mean, this is why I, I kind of go with these debunkers, and I am part of the draft industrial complex, and I will assimilate with them because, you know, you see this year in, year out. It just happened with Will Levis last year. Will Levis comes out of nowhere, and all of a sudden you're hearing, well, the teams really covet him. He could go one overall ahead of Bryce Young. That happened. You can look those articles up. It happened with Mac Jones, for God's sakes. He went from a third rounder to maybe a second rounder to being taken 15th overall by the Patriots in 21. It happens. Sometimes, like, there's the buzz that happens at that position six weeks leading into the draft. This is what we're in in right now, I think, with uh, J.J. McCarthy. Okay, so, uh, and I'm just looking at this. Lindy's I'm just sort of just glancing at this. Is it old? Well, are these guys here, <laughs> here's what they got. Again, we'll chuck markers at this thing next week. Two weeks. Three weeks. Jesus. One, Caleb Williams. Two, Jaden Daniels. Three, Drake May. Four, J.J. McCarthy. Five, Bo Nix. Uh, Six, Michael Pratt, Tulane. Uh, Seven, Joe Milton, Tennessee. Uh, Eight, Spencer Rattler, South Carolina. Is Penix even on the list? Nine, Michael Penix. I, I was looking at, I'm Suck sorry, I just that, zoned man. out for a second. I was, did, is there a typo? Am I missing a page in my freaking uh, book? My magazine here? No, so anyway, the, that sort of proves my point too. It's all over the place. No one knows. So, like, Andrew Callahan, love you, mean it, but, like, there's just a whole page of debunking here in the Boston Herald. He says it's a tough time to block out rumors. He says, I, I promise this is not to pick on Tony Pauline. However, he's not buying the, the Pauline stuff or anyone who has J.J. McCarthy up there. He says McCarth M McCarthy is not regarded as a top 10 prospect by most anyone studying this draft class. He's not? There's people all over the place who have him as the third quarterback. It's not a consensus, but there's plenty of people who have him rated over Drake May, who have him as the third guy. Plenty. Bedard asked six NFL executives last week at the owners' meetings who should go number three. Of the six, two said Drake May, two said J.J. McCarthy, two said trade out. Yes, Drake May's the consensus guy at three, but he's not the overwhelming consensus guy. There's people all over the place who think McCarthy could be drafted number three, including Lewis Reddick. I was listening to Lewis Reddick, uh, watching Lewis Reddick this morning on ESPN. Lewis, is it possible that J.J. McCarthy goes number three? Could J.J. McCarthy supplant Drake May and be the third quarterback taken? Of course he could. You know why? Because this whole this league is subjective, man. And all it takes is one team to say, hey, look, we think even though this was not a quarterback-centric offense that he ran, if we put it a little bit more quarterback-centric and ask him to do a little bit more and ask him to put more of the burden on his shoulders, he's more than equipped to handle it physically and mentally. Look at where he went to school. Look at the kind of winning that they had, the kind of coaching that he had, the kind of offense that he ran and the decisions he made within that offense. You'd have a hard time finding any fault with what he did. What you have a hard time with is, again, like most people point to, but it wasn't his offense. He was on a good team. He benefited from great players around him. Well, what, what national champions don't benefit from that? Right. But I'm, what I'm saying, though, is this. From a physical perspective, if you looked at J.J. McCarthy and you looked at Drake May and you just looked at the raw power that Drake May has, you're going to go, I want that one. But if you look at the total package and look at what J.J. did for his team and the kind of performances he put on in the biggest moments and some of the big throws he made, you'd go, oh, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> I do like this guy. And that's what makes... It's it a must-see night one for us. Okay, so just put the... Is it possible he could go up there in the top three? Of course it's possible, says Lewis. Of course. So why are there so many guys here, especially locally, going... Bruh, 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 they're making it up. They're making it up. Yeah, Burt Breer the other night said that Drake May's wild throws at the pro day that we all saw with our eyes actually happened, right? Correct, in yeah. real time. Mm -hmm. He said they were a social media creation. Like what, Bert? Like some sort of AI? <laughs> or people making too much of it online? C Is that CGI? Like some sort of <laughs> If he meant it that way, I computer generated it. fake throw? Yeah, it's the same people who made Avatar. He says it was like just that's just a social media thing. Like I wasn't on social media, I was watching it on television. James Cameron brings you Drake May's Pro Day. He threw it into the second row. That's not real? No, that was a bad throw. <laughs> well, going to Bert, no. No, no, fake. You're supposed to ignore it. It was doctored. It was just a social media creation, even though it actually happened, and I saw it with my eyes. 
You had to have yelled at him. Oh, I yelled at him. I, I totally yelled at him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bert. Because nobody knows everybody's wrong. Okay, just if there's two things you need to know about the pre-draft process. Nobody knows and everybody's wrong. Yeah, but shouldn't you like the people are picking a side, though? I'm like glad there's discourse. Uh, okay, there's picking a side, I suppose, but then there's just debunking. It's like, well, that's not true. You're making it up. You don't know. You don't know. You could be being lied to. Oh, no, no, no. They're getting the truth. The whole draft consensus could be behind what the actual boards are. The draft boards on teams are usually well ahead of the draft boards on magazines. And I brought this up to these guys, and they'll say, oh, well, you don't know. It's getting closer and closer by the day. And this is what Andrew Callahan told me on TV. Uh, the Jets tried to hire away Todd McShay, that these draft guys, these draft Knicks, now a lot of the guys used to work for the teams. And now they're in the media, or they work in the media, and they've been hired by the teams. And we all use the same GPS tracking data, he told me. I'm like, what do you mean GPS tracking data? Like my ways, like the directions on my phone, you know? No, it's like the next gen stats, the how many miles per hour is he running, and all that crap. It's all shared. Pro Football Focus is... You know, has contracts with the 32 teams. They're used by the media. It's all the same thing. So Andrew's trying to tell me that it's all the same thing now, that we're the media is in lockstep with the teams. No, you're not. No, you're not. I don't mean to yell at Andrew when he's not here, but like he just wrote again. He wrote a whole story here in the Herald debunking. I don't buy it, he says. For one, Elliot Wolf knows how to play the media game and eat by himself this time of year. Officially, he's been working in the NFL and in front offices for 20 years. Are we going to go back to when he was like the ball boy and got people coffee when he was 19 with Green Bay? Okay. Unofficially, as the son of Pro Football Hall of Fame executive and ex-Packers GM Ron Wolf. Here we go. He's been assisting with NFL draft prep for 30 years. Again, 30 years ago, what was his assistance? Grab me a pencil. When he was 10. <laughs> I need okay, some, Dad. I need some Kleenex to blow my nose. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like Belichick. Wolf has also spent most of this offseason keeping his own front office in the dark about his supposed quarterback plan. Oh, that's good. As the Herald reported that's healthy. and detailed at the Combine, there have been no internal indications that that, that has changed. And then furthermore, he says if you're drafting uh, uh, at number three, you need a difference maker. So now he's going to go into the, the scouting report and say that McCarthy's not a difference maker and may possibly is. High ceiling. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. But I do believe the reports. I believe all the reports, and especially at this time of year with this stuff, everybody's wrong and nobody knows. So I don't rule anything out, especially this, when I do feel that number three is not a consensus. So now, do I want J.J. McCarthy over Drake May? I don't. I would take Drake May over J.J. McCarthy. Drake May, in, the, in what I've seen and started to watch, feels like a much better pure passer, which is what I want. I'll take Penix over all of them because I think he's the best pure passer, but I want as close to a pure passer as possible. Uh, Jaden Daniels is down my list. Drake may, certainly Michael Penix would be up it for those reasons, but that's just my personal belief. I'm not going to let that cloud what someone might know or someone might have. The, the other thing, Mike, just quickly, is that the other thing that comes in a factor in these decisions is the gap between the two. So, for example, if the Patriots look at it and say, well, we think May's got a higher ceiling, but the gap really isn't that great, and there's some risk there, and we can get another pick, and we could take McCarthy at eight. It's not just a straight-up one-to-one decision either. There's way more to consider than that. So, like, the idea that everybody knows how it's going to or some anybody knows how it's going to go and, you know, how it's going to fall and what they really want, they have no idea how it's going to shake out. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Mez. Here, for more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.